And look at that, folks. There it is, just waiting for us to do more machine quilting. You keep asking, and I hope I'm still delivering. At any rate, folks, I'm super excited. Let's do some more basic free motion machine quilting on this easiest log cabin ever. Are you ready? Let's get free stitching. Well, well, welcome back, everybody. It is your favorite carefree quilter, Rob Appel. I'm super excited to have you joining us right here on YouTube, Stitch in Heaven So Well, and we are super excited to have you. Please subscribe if you have not done so already. Hit that like button, and let's get on with the machine quilting. Now, a quick apology, and you won't hear me do this very often because I like to live in the present, but yes, if you saw the last video with this quilt, we had some issues with the cameras that you wanted to see the best. Now, the best part is I haven't finished the quilting, so we're just gonna pick up where we left off, and we're going to break this quilt down now in a series of probably three or four more machine quilting videos. I've gotten a ton of your comments. Thank you again so much for being part of our sewing and quilting community here. Uh, the comments were about what kind of motifs should we do throughout the rest of this quilt. So now that we have the opportunity, let's just focus on one motif at a time, section by section throughout the quilt, and go ahead and get this thing finished up together on what we're gonna call a domestic or a standard sewing machine. Now in the last video, we got so excited about clearing out the whole space so that I could show you how to baste a big quilt on a small table. And really the key is just using some of these hardware store clamps. They do come in a variety of sizes and make sure you get the right size for your table. That's the best hint I can really offer for you with those. Ah, speaking of other hints, before we dive into this, the other thing I think we all need today is a good sized sandwich in our tummies and in our sewing room. Let's go ahead and pick a piece of fabric, uh, probably a solid is best, unless you've never quilted before. Then I want you to use a print so you can actually trace what's printed. But right now we're gonna be dealing with some basic motifs. We were doing swirls and curls. I will review those now that we have all the cameras dialed in. But we're also going to move into, let's say, some straight line, moving into some triangles and some stars. Those were other requests from all of you out there in our community. So we're just going to go ahead and address those today. I want you to go ahead and treat yourself to a good half yard at least, if not a full yard when you're making your sandwich. You can use this over and over and over again, folks, but it's going to really help to have a little bit more fabric to grip as we're working through. On the machine today, of course, there's a free motion hopping foot. I like to use a Mat that makes the bed of the table a little bit more uh, slippery. This one's the sew slip mat. We also have the um, glide mats available for you at Stitch in Heaven. I'm donning my machine gears gloves. These give me a nice grip in the fingertip. Don't make my hands sweat. They're real lightweight, but they are. They're going to give me what I used to say is like my Spider-Man fingers and an ice skating rink below. Now, as we go ahead and get started, we're going to treat this sample like it were any other quilt project. Let's go ahead and go right to the middle. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my presser foot is low, and I'm going to use a needle down and a needle up function on my machine, and hopefully you can see that pulled the bobbin thread. Hang on to your needle thread, move it out of the way if that didn't work, and now you can see, and I'm making sure that all my cameras are dialed in right there. I tried to choose some colors that would really work good for us here today, and I'm hoping you can see what's going on. Now, once I've got that thread, I'm going to go ahead and lock my stitches in place by just taking a few stitches like this, and now I'm going to go ahead and stitch away from the design. Just to get myself warmed up and out of the way from where I was working with my threads, okay? Now, I can see already that my thread, when I was first threading the machine, has twisted around the needle. I'm surprised it didn't break already. So as much as I want to dash through this video, folks, I'm going to do our best instructions, and that means I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's talk about cutting thread uh, if we have to stop for any reason. And that's going to take a few more stitches in place here. Okay, and now, because I twisted that thread down, I can move it around, pull it out of the way, cut it all free, including the bobbin thread was cut free now, and I can make sure that my machine is threaded proper. All right, so maybe that's the first step of all of these before you even put on your sew slip mat or your gloves. I do have a full bobbin today. I do have a fresh needle today. 
I do want to set my feed dogs to zero on this machine. You probably want to drop yours if you don't have a handy quilter, Stitch 510. Well, this is a little more industrial style machine and it's built just for this style of work. I love it. Um, but again, I'm going to have the opportunity to show you how to start and stop again. Now, needle, press your foot down, needle down once, bringing up bobbin thread. I'm going to now engage the needle down feature. I just love that so that if I ever have to stop, take my hands off the quilt, the quilt doesn't move or shift. And once again, now I'm going to just get away from that thread we just put in there before I stitch over it too many times so that I can pull it out of the way and we can go ahead and cut it. Now we're ready to start where we left off in the last video, which was big circle, little circle. And this is again, a great warm up drill, but in free motion machine quilting, you only have to master curves and straight lines until you will be a pro. <laughs> Think about that statement. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna kind of come down and get a little out of the way. My hands wide enough to kind of see my whole circle. I'm just gonna pretend I'm tracing and now I'm kind of follow that edge around and I'm gonna do a small circle. And I need to stop because I'm already getting to the point where my hands are pushing past where they need to be. I'm in director mode. I want to be nice and close where I can really get in here. So now again, I'm going to finish out that big circle, shooting right for that wobble I created, and a small circle. And this is a great way for us just to start to build our rhythm and get our feeling for circles or curls in machine quilting. The more stitches you put into a circle, the smoother it will look. Remember, a circle with only four stitches is considered a square. Now, <laughs> let's pick up on today's video, folks. Some of the other points I wanna make sure I point out. You won't see me, even in the circles, moving the quilt like this. The only time we rotate our quilt like that is to get out of a hot spot where we've quilted ourselves into a bad area. Maybe there's too much bulk, fabric's falling off the table, I can't see where I'm going, I'm on an applique, whatever reason, needle goes down, and yes, we can absolutely rotate our quilt sandwich as long as, as the needle is not moving. Once the needle starts moving, I need you to keep your dedicated north, north, so that all your movements are like this, but your quilt itself is staying in the same direction. You're now moving the drawing, the paper under the needle. So I promised you guys some straight line quilting, and that's something that we also addressed by using the foot in a video recently, where I was basically just gonna go ahead and do some, let's just get over here, straight line quilting, and then maybe I would use the edge of my foot, come on and over, use the edge of my foot. And folks, I'm actually showing you another really good practice drill right now, because going forward and backwards for me personally, seems to be easier than side to side. Part of it is I can't see the back of that foot as well. And part of it is also gonna be based on our sewing machine setup. Without being too technical, and I have done some videos on free motion troubleshooting, the easiest way to say it, there's a special area where the needle comes down and the hook, the part that goes around your bobbin, comes right behind that needle. If you push your needle into your hook, you can break your needle and you can um, cut your threads very easily. If you pull your needle away from your hook, you can skip stitches. And so that's why knowing if you have kind of a bad area in your quilting, you can adjust for your body mechanics and or like I was saying before, you can actually rotate your project to compensate if you uh, want to sew away from where you're the worst, let's say. Now, we're gonna talk about triangles and I haven't figured them out. Uh, I was asked to, so I took of course the hardest request first. And what I have been able to determine is I love a square in a square style pattern. This works really well for a lot of designs. And this is just that series of straight lines in all four directions. You will be crossing threads, sometimes once, sometimes multiple times. But something like this, you can really go in a lot of directions. It's very fluid. It can frame in very nice work in some very standard like nine patch style patchwork. 
and it's basically endless. So it's very easy to keep adding on to as you go. All right. But when it comes into triangles, triangles kind of bring us back to where we started from because it's a three pointed circle. <laughs> so why do I think I'm so funny today? I'm sorry. <laughs> At any rate, so I was struggling with the triangles. I was finding like if maybe I did a big triangle area and then I kind of cut myself short. But then the key was creating triangles in like different locations. And I have to say, I didn't love this motif as much as I like the squares. Because again, all of a sudden I kind of feel stuck where I'm at. But I do think that there's some value to knowing how to get your, well, there's a lot of value in knowing how to get yourself out of a painted corner like this. So I think maybe if we wanted to do triangles for a motif, and I even have triangle patterns in my fabric that I've used on this quilt. So this was a great ask, by the way, whoever put that comment in again, thank you so very much. So I need to do some more time working on it. A lot of us will practice by taking a Sharpie marker, putting it on paper and not lifting the pen, nice felt tip, and you're just kind of moving it around. And that replicates creating these kinds of designs. I think for the triangles though, I would either run them with straight lines, put a few triangles here and again to catch your eye, and or use the triangles like we did back in elementary school to create star patterns, which was another request. So this is where the straight lines comes really in handy. Let's go ahead and spend a few more moments on our test sample and then I'm gonna just put my real quilt under the needle and we'll sew for a few minutes with some music going or something like that so you can see how it then really applies on top of a real piece of patchwork. All right, so now let's say we're gonna go ahead, let's get ourselves to another free area where we can see, but when I do that, I like to trace this. Hey, this sample when done, if done not decently, could be still come like a bag front or something like that, a pillow front. Okay, hopefully you can all see where we're at now. So again, if we were gonna try to do some of those stars like we did in elementary school, then you could just run the line up and then just start a new star. So you're always gonna have a thread line connecting but you may need to come down into another area. Oh, I'm stuck, what do I do? Now oh, my brain stalled out, sorry folks. So you can see it's still gonna kinda of have that cut over. So maybe you wanna do triangles. And stars. Who knows? What I will tell you is I like to not be so well thought out and organized. And I learned this from Angela Walters and believe it or not, folks, I think she's as good as she says she is. <laughs> Angela, you know how much I love you. And yes, I have learned a ton from you. So Angela taught me a long time ago, you, we all should have a library of quilting designs, motifs, pea pods, swirls, triangles, stars, curls, whatever they are, so that from section to section as we go through our quilting project, we can just kind of do different dances as we go as the band changes songs throughout our evening. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let's go ahead and stop stitching now by taking a few more stitches in place. Now I'm gonna push my needle up button, uh, which is the same as the needle down button, Come on over here. I think this is the trick I was trying to show you earlier. If I cut that nice and tight, boom, there, look at that. Bobbin thread is uh, been cut free. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the real project back underneath our needle. I'm gonna make sure that as much of the quilt is kind of out of the way. It's not caught on the edges of my table in any way. It's not hanging too much off this table here. And then I'm gonna come back into any old spot I was working in before. When we're quilting, we wanna start in the center, just like we did on our sample, and we wanna always radiate out towards the edges because that's pushing the batting and pushing the backing out with our quilt top. Those seams are flexing in our patchwork, and this will help us keep our ripples moving to the borders when they're trimmed off before we bind it. So at any rate here, now I'm back in an area where I've already been stitching. I'm gonna sew from where I was, to a new spot. And now we've been doing some serious swirls. So I want to go ahead and drop my needle and one more time so I can pull up that bobbin thread. This is why I prefer not to use my thread cutter in this situation, but just bringing the thread up and down, locking that down again. And now to get out of that space, 
I'm gonna go ahead and do some of the swirls like I was doing in the video where the camera went south on us. So in this situation, I was just doing an arc coming back and forth. Let's get into that yellow so you can see a little bit better. So I would do both a half curl circle, come into an area, maybe do a whole circle, come back to repeat. So it kind of gives you these fun circles with shadows, these swirls and curls. You do want to be careful not to get them going in the same direction too often. So there was a direction change. Oh, so many things I can explain still, folks. Look at that. There's even a safety pin getting into our position. So now that I'm close enough to that, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out of the way. And now that I've also locked in this thread, I can come over here and cut it. And now let's go ahead, and this is a great spot to begin those triangles. And so I'm gonna straight line to follow the seam allowance. And first, just to figure out what the heck I'm gonna do, I'm just drawing in some straight line. Now I'm gonna come down here and I'm actually gonna first follow one of the triangles in the fabric. Oh, did I mention I designed this fabric? Down here to another triangle, following this line. But as I cut over here, I'm now just gonna do a bigger triangle. I'm gonna follow this design down a little bit to outline the triangle. Coming in here, let's do another straight line up, pulling off a diamond, because a diamond is two triangles. And again, I feel a little bit lost. And when I feel lost, I need to stop. I need to clear my mind. I need to clear my hands. Most of us are probably seated at this moment, so we should wiggle our buns. No, I'm not gonna show you that. And now, let's just see if we can get over to a little bit of this lighter section and keep playing with some straight line, whether it's triangle stars or basically um, square in a square as we fill in this little portion as we run out the rest of this video. As I've promised, I will be back with more videos. We can talk about some feathers. We can talk about some pea pods was one of the requests I remember. The only thing I really have to do at this point is remain consistent in the amount of stitching that I've already started. So if I've started with a fairly dense amount of machine quilting, then I just need to do that same amount of quilting. If I've moved from curls into straight lines like I've just done, no problem. I just need to, like I said, be respectful of the amount of quilting that's already been started in this project. I'm gonna come down on over here, cut this line. We will talk about some advanced techniques down the road, little, areas where we can actually seal in areas of batting and quilt away from them to create more density or less density. But that's for another day. Right now we're just building some straight lines that have some character at first to work off of the curve lines that were coming out of this design. Now I can switch directions because I'm still radiating out from that center line. But you notice I'm following the seam allowances. Folks, probably the best thing I can say today is whenever you are trying to figure out what to do and where to do it in your quilt, if nothing else, just trace your patchwork. So I'll say that again. If you ever aren't sure what to do, in one of your quilt tops, it can be as simple as playing with and or tracing your patchwork. You've heard the term stitch in the ditch a million times. Well, it can be that cool, that simple, that easy. Now this particular quilt, because it's a hodgepodge of different styles of log cabins, this hodgepodge of quilting motifs will be very appropriate. Look at that, I'm back over near the triangles. Now I'm gonna pull a triangle in the opposite direction, cheat myself in, echo it, find that line out. And a lot of times I will try to find escape patterns where my fabric and my thread start to camouflage.
All right, I need to take a quick break. Pause, look at where my hand has ended up, way over here. And I was thinking how nice this looked, but I was also thinking I have yet to really do any of those triangles. So apparently I'm a little bit more intimidated by them than I thought I was. Let's go ahead and um, get a little bit of the fluff and stuff back in play. Throw down a few more triangles right here. As I approach the triangle motif. That's a good one. <laughs> now I'm gonna ruin it by outlining it in the opposite direction. But I do realize I need to come back into the area I was quilting. I love the way my friend Carly Porter machine quilts and she'll use a lot of these triangles as like a zigzag, as a breaking it up in her graffiti quilting to set a new tone. It's very effective. So you can see, after I pull this thread out of the way, right here I can start to put in a new tone and do something fun to play with in that. So let's go ahead and wrap up today's video so that you can all take some time, make yourself a nice big old hoagie of a sandwich here and do a bunch more machine quilting practice. Please don't stitch too long that your shoulders, your neck, or your back starts to get tight. I want you to be nice and loose when you approach your quilt. Make sure you're using some of the machine gears gloves, some of the um, slip mats. Heck, if you don't even have a handy quilter, I've got a link in the description for you today. So please, again, uh, make sure that you have a good comfortable environment, some good tools, maybe some nice music going so that you can really enjoy your practice do take the time to warm up, if, even if it's only for a few moments before you get into your re real quilt. It will certainly help you feel very comfortable in what you're doing. I would still appreciate more comments today on what styles of motifs you would like to learn. I have most of them figured out for the rest of this project, but you never know when one of our community members is going to send us all into a new, beautifully inspired direction. And that's why I appreciate you all being part of our community here. So again, I will say it, please subscribe today to today's video, smash that like button. And until we see you with another fantastic tutorial right here from Stitch in Heaven, please. Stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.